Hiya, and welcome back to Password. The game that teaches us that... There's there's already a list for furry husbandos that need to be fixed. And Tyson is probably number... I want to say seven on that list. I think he's a solid number seven on the list of men that need to be fixed. Anyways, let's just hop right in. And right off the back, and right off the bat, speed running. Okay, are we apologizing again? Toxic has some traits that can be fixed. Radioactive is lethal. What man, what furry husbando is radioactive? Oh shit, Leo. Yeah, Leo. Leo, Leo. Leo's probably radioactive. Tyson wanted some more cuddle time, although I don't know how he'd feel about sharing a beanbag in the company of others. But maybe that'd be something he'd want? Okay, who are we sitting next to? Leo's fucking radioactive. Toxic is Haruki and Tyson. I've just been fucking vibing all day, Dragon. I've just been vibing. Oh, hiya. <laughs> <laughs> I think I already know the answer. Radioactive. <laughs> but Amicus gets fixed by the end of it. I watched as Ty wandered back over, dragging two beanbags behind him and shooting me a confused look. What? Nothing! You weirdo, I got you beanbag. Hey, I did too, or for house. We... We needed four all up anyway, right? Right, but... Ty dropped both of the beanbags down, dropped himself into the closest one. You know, Dave, don't necessarily need to sit in a beanbag if you don't want. What do you mean? Want to sit in my lap? <coughs> now hold on. He has his own fucking beanbag. Hey, figured out at least, ask. I reckon I might be just as comfy. He's not sitting in your lap, Dean. Right. Well, all right then. Tyson rolled his eyes, looking over to Haas. This is when I made my move. What? I half dove on Ty, half on the beanbag. He sat next to him, presumably for me. Watch it, yeah? A hand found my shoulder, but he made no effort to push me away. In fact, it didn't even leave my shoulders. I propped myself up and cuddled into the spot under his arm, using it as a pillow. Comfy? Well, maybe a little. Hey, now, what happened if I have his own beanbag? Oh, Dean. <laughs> oh, Dean. Step one, stop thinking with your penis. Step two, read the fucking room. And step three, you've been friend-zoned. You are so deep in the friend zone that you're finding fucking <coughs> Dean you're so deep in the friend zone you're finding a goddamn you're finding fucking I don't know what are you gonna do Dean what are you gonna do with your depression now that the yeen doesn't fucking want you what are you gonna do start a podcast hey now what happened to him having his own main bag? He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Of course, but... I felt Ty's hand on my shoulder tense a little. If this is bothering you, Ty, I can go sit in my own beanbag. I don't really mind. I just thought... Nope. You're not going anywhere. As if to emphasize this point, his other hand reached over to swing my legs over his lap. This is fine. Well, hold on. I wouldn't mind something cleared up. What? Everyone comfy and ready to start? Is what I want to ask if I wasn't just over there and could hear everything you guys were talking about. 
What's happening exactly? You and Dave. You're not night and rat. Uh Really? <laughs> That's what the problem is? I assume without Buddy Buddy they've been lately that they must be. Tyson roughly shoved me away, getting to his feet to prod aggressively at Haas's chest. I'm not gay. Haas didn't even flinch, glancing down at the finger still held against his chest before gently brushing it aside. And? What do you mean, and? So you like to cuddle dudes? Seems pretty gay to me. <laughs> I'm not. And that's simple. Just say no homo. The fuck? What do you mean? It makes you feel better, just say no homo. Might make you feel better and make it clear for Dave. Now hold on. <laughs> There's nuances to this. Now, Tyson. Are you wearing socks? Probably not. So say no homo. But if you are wearing socks, then don't fucking say no homo. Because then that makes it gay. I'm wearing Crocs right now. They're comfortable. No homo. Ty seemed shaken, repeating the words over to himself as if confused. Quiet eyes drawn to the floor. He fell back into his own beanbag awkwardly, keeping his eyes away from me. Glad well, without we got that cleared up. She'll tell me what kind of women you like sometimes, Tyson. Might know someone to introduce you to. He made a nod and committal grunt while Haas hit the lights. Ah, oh, shit. I felt his hand grip my shoulder slightly harder when he said my name. Not that I was really paying attention. I was comfy cuddled up to Ty, and he was slightly scratching the top of my head while he talked to Haas. Is that how people nowadays figure people are gay? <laughs> I didn't really get the show, so I let them talk. It was rare to see Tyson ask so many questions, but rarer still to see Haas answer each of them without raving about the content. I might go see where Dean ended up. See how the crap's going to. Really? Gotta do something until it's time for dinner. What are you two planning on doing? I craned my neck to look at Tyson, seeing him thoughtful. Just gonna chill with Dave, probably. Sweet, well, you two have fun. Let's see you at dinner. I watched as Haas wandered off with a wave, stretching as he crossed the threshold and disappeared out of sight. But. Cuddled up to Tyson, the two of us sat there in silence for a few moments. So. Yeah. He needed my shoulder jaw clenched. Did I do all right? What do you mean? Making friends, I mean. Well, I think so, but you don't just become friends with someone after hanging out once. It takes a few times at least. Oh. I expected a follow-up, but there wasn't. Instead, he sighed out, shaking his head. Makes sense. I shouldn't, you know. I really don't, Ty. Come on, tell me. Uh, let me just scoot my chair in. I was hoping this would be easy. Well, let's go start. Plus, Haas is sharing things with you, too. Yeah. And I guess worst case scenario, you still have a backup? A backup? Dean? Don't know how much your future boyfriend is a sure thing, friend-wise. I sat up, rolling over, so I was sitting in Ty's lap, facing him, hands supporting me up by finding purchase on his chest. I mean me, Ty. You? Of course, always. Ty laughed, taking one of my hands in his and giving it a squeeze. You fucking dork. You're already my best friend. Don't care if you're the only one here enough. That wasn't... Then... Oh, fuck. His smile faded fast, looking at me as the frown started to form. It eased back, settled, and then eased back until he... just looked at me with an expression I couldn't place. You didn't mean that, did you? Uh, oh, no, I meant it. Friends, right? Don't lie to me. I suddenly felt myself falling backwards as he shoved me onto my back, pinning me down by the shoulders. Don't. Lie. I squeaked under his frown. What? What did you want me to say? What about your fucking want for me to be honest? 
Don't I get the same thing? I, I don't know. He grabbed me roughly by the waist, pinning me further to the floor. I don't know, Ty. The fuck do you want, Dave? I quaked under him, stammering. I don't... Say you don't know one more time, pup. Say it. It was a dare, one that I was scared to follow through with. There were a few times that they were able... That were able to make... There were a few things that were able to make me cry these days, but Ty was one of them. Not out of the same sort of fear that came with the fear of being bullied or physically harmed. Something deeper. Something darker. Ty! You're scaring me! No sooner than I'd said it, he froze. Eyes wide in shock looking down at me. I... He eased off, delicate, almost as if he was scared that he was about to break something and was doing what he could to stop that from happening. I breathed out, heart beating fast in my chest. I'm sorry, I... But he didn't let me up. I was still under him, though I had the impression that he wouldn't have been hard to move if I really wanted him to move. Tyson. Yes? What's the matter? Really? Did I do something? No. Was it something I said? Not that either. Then... In a cruel twist of irony, I laughed at what Tyson came out with next. I don't know. <laughs> I was too late to stifle my laughter with my hand, instead coming out closer to an amused snort. Still, I was thankful that Ty didn't make another move on me for doing it. Okay, fine, I do know, alright? You're not the only one that's been out of it lately, yeah? Why didn't you say anything? And what would you have done? Probably tell me, it's alright, Ty. Or, if you want to talk, I'll listen. It's true, though. That's probably the worst part. I bring it up, you'll be upset, and then where will that get us? You mean... It's your dad. <laughs> what the fuck? What? What? No! Just, no! Not, not to the game. Not to the game. To what was said in chat. I, I already denied it. I already denied it. I fell limp, gulping. Look, you're not the only one that misses him, alright? He was more of a dad than mine was to me anyway. So, when you say you want your dad because you're confused, I get it. But I wouldn't give for some advice right now. I was almost scared to ask. About what? You really want to know? Of course I do, Ty! Yes, I know I killed your message. Because it was... It, it wasn't good. And baguettes are fucking amazing. They are so fucking good. I'd fucking, fucking marry one if I could. I'd ask him if I was good. If I was worth something. I want to say something, he, but he cut me off, continuing. I know I'm worth something. I meant more than that. If it was alright to be feeling things... Like what? He said to execute the French. Don't worry about it. Ty. Fine. It's you. I don't get how or why you do these things to me, but you do. <laughs> it hurts in a way that I don't know how to hurt anyone. Like, you're under my fur, under my fucking skin. And sometimes I don't want that feeling to go. Other times I try clawing it out with how much it hurts. So, it's a bad feeling? Sometimes. That is love, my friend! T take it from me personally, that is love and also truly believing that you can't be with a person that you love. Take it from me. Take it from me. When I was younger, I had a crush on someone, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep him a mystery. Keep him a mystery. Um, just know 
that I fell head over heels for him. Like, I was truly in love with him. Like, there was not a single doubt in my mind. Well, there were some, but most of it was mostly logic shit, but no. It can, it can easily be summed up to... The heart wants what it wants. Now, obviously... The reason I'm telling this is because... I could not have him. I could not be with him. For the simple fact that... He's straight. That That's it. And... Shit like that hurts. It experiencing a heartbreak without actually like experiencing heartbreak without actually telling them mostly out of fear that you're not good enough. It's not fucking fun. And it hurts like hell. But I think it's less of a like a painful like, less of a physical pain and more of, like, a psychological, emotional pain. That just fucks with you. It fucks with you pretty fucking badly. It is not fun. Especially if you never get closure from it, which in this case, I did not get closure from it. And... That honestly just makes it a little harder to get over it, because you did not truly experience an end to it. It just stopped abruptly. You did not experience a smooth end. Think of it like, like a cliff. Think of it like a cliff. You could either... There's a cliff, and then there's a hill. I think closure is like going down a hill... Whereas having something end abruptly is falling off of a cliff. And also in my experience, love can be a downward spiral. It's not fucking fun. It is, again in my experience, one of the best feelings. It is an amazing feeling while also being extremely fucking painful. It's like, it's one of those situations where you can't have one without the other. You cannot have... It's like, two sides of the same coin. That's why most romances are tragedies? Yeah, pretty much. But no, no. I have gone on this rant long enough. I've gone on it long enough. Back to the story. Sometimes. It doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes it lasts in love, sometimes it hurts instead. Yeah. It happens all the time. It's only been happening lately. I don't get it. Are you just jealous? The fuck would I be jealous for? I don't know that maybe you want something you don't know you want. I get that sometimes. I don't get it. Okay. You know how sometimes I get cranky and you seem to know what I need to make me feel better? Yeah. You're not that hard to figure out. Well, it's like that, but for you. I need help figuring out what you need, I guess. Oh. But what I think you need and what I can give you are two different things. Oh. But Ty? Yeah? Did you tonight, um... What? Would you spend the night with me? I... Yeah, of course! Sorry, I'm, I'm a mess. Uh, hold on, let me think. Can you get off me first? Ty rolled off so he was laying on his side on the floor looking at me. I had an idea. Oh yeah? How about a shower? Together? I don't know. It helped me, it helped me get that spot on my back, plus you'd be there to check, right? Still, naked, together. Well, it's just an idea. We could clean separately, I could brush you before bed, you could brush me, and we could just, I don't know. Chill. Okay, okay, real quick, real quick. The bully redemption arc is like the villain redemption arc. I, d I just want to get this out real quick. 
the promised Neverland anime pissed me the fuck off because of that. Because of the redemption arc. It pissed me the fuck off. Because in the manga, spoilers, by the way, spoilers for the promised Neverland. In the manga, Isabella has an amazing redemption arc, but they, but they fucked, they said fuck that to the anime, and she doesn't get a redemption arc, and it pisses me off, it pisses me off to no fucking end. Ty sighed out heavily, eyes drawn to the floor before they flicked up to me. Yeah, yeah, alright. I'll decide later if I'll join you, but yeah, that sounds nice. Just like back home, nothing has to change, nothing has to be different. We can, I don't know, watch videos on my phone or something, just... I rolled forward into him, sighing out and covering my face with my hands. I'm starting to break. I need something that's familiar again. Isn't that anime terrible? Season 1 is god tier. Season 1, they did to perfection. The second season is absolute ass, though. I'm starting to break. I need something familiar again. Alright, then what should we do until it's time for dinner? With how late you slept, you're not having another nap. Well, we're, you know, already here. Could play games, could watch something. I don't know. Sure, I guess? No, I don't want to force you to do anything you don't want, Ty. That should go without saying. Jeez, that's not what I meant. What I meant was that you should be the one playing the game. And what will you be doing? Probably just sit next to you watching. Aw, come on, Ty, play with me. Nope, just gonna watch. Just wanna watch. Besides, you need the practice. I wandered over to the games and picked something out. Something easy. I don't know why, but I think part of me wanted to try and impress Ty despite not being the best at games to begin with. It was hardly new information to him anyway. The few times he'd watched me play games, it was just simple ones. Or ones that were more about just making stuff at a leisurely pace. There were a few times where he'd gotten me to try something scary, but after the first time one got to me to the point one got me to the point of crying, he promised he wouldn't make me do that again. Ah, oh, I've been in that situation. I have been in that situation. Except it wasn't a game. It was analog horror. And it was Vita Carnus. And I cried on stream. I legitimately started crying. Obviously wouldn't make me do that again. <laughs> Wearing a fond smile on my face, I wandered back over with a wireless controller and sat with Ty, whittling the time down until it was time for dinner. Yeah. I cried. I'm also... No, no. Similar to you, uh, Casey, I... I am also a huge fucking coward. I am also a coward. I could not finish Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach because I got to a section and I was so scared that I was going to get jump scared by Chica that I just stopped. It'll he I'll help. It's only burgers, right? Sure, that works. Thanks, pup. That's how much of a wuss I am. Tyson wandered up to me, looking me over before keeping his voice held fairly low. It was unclear if he didn't want anyone else hearing or not, but he was focused only on me. I'm gonna get ready for bed. Oh, alright, Ty. There was more hesitation, Tyson looking o me over carefully. See you upstairs. I nodded slowly. Good. There were a few more moments before he came in, before he came in again, patting me on the head before walking by. I watched him go, his hands buried in his pockets and his tail wagging behind him. I didn't know better, he looked excited. Truth be told, I was looking forward to it as well. Some sense of normalcy after a few crazy days. I wasn't sure which room I should be going to, as that was the one thing that I hadn't pitched to him. He wasn't in mind, so I grabbed what I needed and wandered over to his room. He didn't seem to flinch as I entered. In fact, it didn't seem to register that I'd entered with how he was looking at his phone while he sat on the edge of the bed. Hi. Hey, pup. Come here. I wandered closer, what I'd brought from my room bundled up in my arms. Nothing overly out of the ordinary, a fresh change of clothes, my toothbrush, just basic things. Ty patted the bed and I sat down next to him, putting my things off to the side near the end of the bed. He put an arm over my shoulder and pulled me in close so we were properly side by side, resting his head against mine. Crazy couple of days, huh? Yeah. Reckon this would have all gone down the same way if we just stayed at home? What do you mean? Say you invited me here and your friend said no. I would have just stayed at home or hit the road. But if you stayed with me, pup... 
He trailed off, sighing out. I guess Rek and I'd be just this much of a mess if we were just hanging out at yours for a month. I don't know, Ty. I really don't. Maybe it'd just be like old times and we'd stay up eating pizza. Maybe it'd be more like what happened a few days ago. I really don't know. I looked over to the door to the room upon seeing Tyson's ears droop. We were safely alone, so I felt comfortable enough to speak my mind. Or at least comfortable enough to steal my nerves to start speaking it. Ty? Yeah? I breathed out a breath I hadn't realized I was holding onto. I like it when I'm around you. What? Even when it hurts. It's not the same as what you described before, but it's close. Dave. Fuck, this wasn't meant to happen. What do you mean? I did what- I didn't mean to- Ty? It's okay. No, it fucking isn't! You need someone who will treat you right. That isn't me. But... But what? You do treat me right, Ty. You always have. Even before, you know, what we started with was rough, sure, but... I turned my body to face him properly, letting his arm fall from my shoulder so it hung limply next to him instead. You make me happy. In a flash, he was upon me, pinning me down for the second time today. This time was different. I could feel the shoulders slacking as he held onto me tight. Ty? He mumbled something right next to my ear, and even then I couldn't make it out. It didn't matter, though. As soon as he got up, I could look at him properly. You make me happy too, Dave, you fucking dork. He pulled me into a hug again. You know how it is, right? That you've got my back? That's right, but... That's not all. There's more? We looked at each other for a bit. Ty pulling his gaze away first, clearing his throat. Yeah, but it's not important. Come on, Ty, don't leave me hanging like that. Fine, I was going to say it's time for shower. See? Not important. I frowned at him, unconvinced. Yeah, right. If you're lucky, I'll come join you, so get your butt clean and then we can jump in bed. This early? After good brushing, yeah. I felt my cheeks burn. Wondering if what I assumed he was... What I assumed he meant was going to happen, I hopped up and wandered over to the shower. There was something nice about hot water, or maybe it was just water in general. As I lathered up, running my digits through my fur, I sighed out and closed my eyes. Just on the other side of the bedroom was Tyson, who had caused me no shortage of grief over the time we'd been here. But at the same time, confused me more than he ever had. Was he jealous? Was he interested in me in that way? I shook my head, pushing the thoughts down. He had made it clear that he wasn't interested, right? Not only that, but there was Dean to consider. Not having a talk with Dean wasn't out of the question. He'd likely be disappointed, but... My eyes flew open when I heard the door to the bathroom open. Hi. I'm just gonna go ahead and... Just... Even though I know it's not NSF for you, I, I'm not going to chance it. I kept facing the wall, still unsure if I wanted to face him in the buff. What? Nothing! My heart began to race, feeling him up close like this. While I couldn't see anything except the tiles in front of me, it was clear that he was just as naked as I was. You miss, this, you miss that spot again. I know. Want me to get it? I nodded slowly, feeling his arms tense around me slightly before his hands started to wander from my chest down to my stomach. It was having an effect on me, and I tucked my tail between my legs, embarrassed. Ty's hands lingered there for a moment before scratching lightly and bringing them back up. Ty? I know. Did you want it? Um... I gulped, unsure. When my answer didn't come right away, Ty shifted so he was di wasn't directly behind me anymore. I'll take that as no. Pass me the soap. Wait, I- What? I'm sorry. Don't be. It's fine. What about you, though? I could feel that I wasn't the only one potentially ready to go, but he just huffed. I'm not reading that. He took that as a cue to take the soap from me, digging his fingers into the back of my neck and making me gasp. It was a good gasp, though, and he knew it, having done this very thing before, so he didn't relent until I was properly clean. You don't need a boyfriend that can get, that can get the spot for you, Pop. Uh, uh, uh-huh. In my stupor, I could make out the slightly amused tone Ty used, razzing me as he continued to scrub. Or you could just get good at remembering to use the FUCKING SCRUBBING BRUSH! I chuckled, nervous as I let Tyson scrub my back. Alright, you're good to rinse off. 
What about you? I can do it. Don't worry about it, pup. He guided me more into the water, and I rinsed myself off, making note to wash over the spot that Tyson said I missed. When I was just about done, a hand came down onto my rear firmly, making me jump. He shot me a toothy smile before waving me off. But can I wash you next time? If you're lucky. I stepped out of the shower, grabbing a towel, and started to dry off. A few times I looked over my shoulder, watching Ty scrub himself facing me while he did so. With the amount of steam, I couldn't make out any I couldn't make anything out, and I was torn about wanting to see in the first place. I gave myself a quick blow dry before heading into the bedroom. You mean Star Wars reference? Wait, what? With a towel around my waist, I left the bathroom and wandered over to Ty's bed where my pile of clothes were. We were just going to be lounging around and sleeping, so I pulled on some sleeping shorts and sat my clothes down nearby off the bed. Then began the wait. I wasn't sure if Ty was going to step out of the bathroom in a towel or not, so I sat on the edge of the bed facing away from the bathroom just to be safe. I heard the water turn off. Wait. Then the sound of the blow dryer. When the bathroom door opened, I heard him approach the bed behind me. What are you doing? Just waiting. What? Not hoping to catch a peek? Well, I was curious, but, you know. Oh god, I've also been in that situation. I have also been in that situation. And it is not fun. Being in that situation. I was curious, but, you know. Heard some more shuffling around and Ty cleared his throat. Okay, okay, you know what? You know what? I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell that story. I'm gonna tell that story. Uh, I just started... I just started school. I just... I just started school. And this was before my roommate dropped out. He just got back from the shower. I just got off work. I just got off of work. And... I was just laying down on, laying down in my bed, and he walks in, and he's like, and keep in mind, this man is a fucking cowboy, like, stereotypical cowboy, and I will admit, he was hot as hell. He just told me, turn around unless you want to see me naked, and keep in mind, I was still in the closet at this time. Like, he said, turn around unless you want to see something. I don't think that's what he actually said. Like, he said that in a country accent because he had a country accent. Oh, no, I didn't fucking turn around. I planted my ass on my bed and just stayed turned around. Better? Okay. Not done yet, though. What do you mean? Rush me. Oh, right. Sure, but then my turn after. Yup. Yes! I came around to the other side of the bed and Ty got into position. He must have already laid out the brush in preparation as it was sitting on his pillow. The moment I got to... The moment I put brush to fur, he sighed out. Just like that, pup. His tail started to wag slightly as I brushed down his back. I know how you like it, don't worry. No, oh, same. I could feel the tension falling from Ty as I brushed him, stopping only once I heard him moan softly. Why'd you stop? You, um, feels good, pup. You make the same sounds when I do it to you. Should have been able to tell from my tail, right? Well, true, but you don't like talking about it. What about, pup? Anything that's remotely close to you being a dog? Ty sat up, sat up looking off into the distance. Yeah. Ty? Sorry, just getting ready for something. Oh, my turn for brushing? Yeah, but that's not all. I trust you, so it's about time I tell you why that sets me off. I don't tell anyone, alright? I mean... Of course, Ty. Alright, so I'm a wolf. But I'm also not. Half, I guess. Half? Mom was a wolf. Don't even remember what she was the more I think about it. Bitch walked out on us when I was just a kid. Didn't give a damn about leaving me with Dad. Not that my dad was any better, but he didn't put me up for adoption, so that's something. 
Sometimes wish he did. It wasn't all bad, though, right? I showed you how things were, Dave. You tell me. You had it so lucky, so damn lucky, and I hated you for it! At least I did until you started looking out for me. Then I just started hating Dad more. I'm sorry, Ty, I know. When I started paying more attention, I just, I don't know, I guess I just started noticing how sad you were. I wanted to help. You did. Trust me, you did. But being called a dog just reminds me that I'm re- But being called a dog just reminds me that I'm related to some bitch that walked out on her kid and makes me so mad. You know why, though? It makes me worry I'll do the same thing. Hell, I was basically planning on it. I shot him a look and he continued, and he sighed out, continuing. The plan was to pack up and just bail. Come back one day or not, I don't know. While on the road, I could just, you know, sort my shit out. Figure out what I'm into and why. Can't just leave you in the lurch, though. Can't take you with me either. So a plan was to make sure someone's looking out for you while I'm gone. If that means a boyfriend or whatever, then fine. I sat there, unsure. I don't like the idea of you leaving, Ty. Me neither. Not anymore. What else am I meant to do? I didn't have an answer for him. I wasn't panicked so much as deflated as he wanted to leave for what seemed like a good reason. And he was open to coming back, so... Look, just... He took the brush from me carefully, running his hands through the freshly brushed fur on his head. Let me brush you when you can cuddle. Hang on, I will be right back. I'll be right back. And I'm back. Let me brush you and we can cuddle. Wait, there's something I want to tell you, something important. What is it? I just want you to know that even if you leave, no matter how long it takes you to come home, you have a home to come back to. What? He croaked out his response, staring at me. Your family, Ty. I don't know if that's as a brother or as a close friend or whatever. I trailed off, fearing that I'd said something wrong. But seeing Ty's face shift towards a smile, but most importantly relaxed, put me at ease. Really? Uh, to which part? I'm family? Of course, Ty. If you'd asked me a couple years ago, I probably would have said the same thing. Thanks. Hey, Ty, don't cry. It's all right. I'm, I'm not crying. Just something in my eye is all. I meant it, though. Everything. If you need to go sort yourself out, I'll be here when you get back. Better not need me to get that spot for you when you get back. To emphasize his point, he scratched between my shoulders at the point he was referring to. Now come on, your turn, Brad. After I got my brushing and Ty hit the lights and we got under the covers. We lay there for a bit and before he rolled me onto my side, an arm under my head and his other over my, over my chest. There wasn't anything left to say. I was comfortable and it felt right. It seemed that it was alright for him too, based on what I was feeling under my tail. Oh fuck. I said nothing of it, wondering if he was going to make the first move, but before too long he fell asleep and his breathing was level. It wasn't like the other morning where he seemed to be having a bad dream. If anything, this seemed to be the opposite. And I was glad. He did. Oh, David. Hey, David, look, it's you. Ty still had me cuddled to his chest. Although he had moved to grind more against my rear with his morning wood for all I knew he was still asleep. For a split second I considered it. I I stretched how I could, Tyson yawning over my shoulder and stretching along with me. 
seemed he was awake, barely. His grip on me tightened and... He gave me a squeeze again before settling back, his, bre his breath leveling out before snoring softly. I took the chance to pry myself free of him and get up. Uh, hi, Hoss. Hey. I looked behind me quickly, sighing out as Ty approached to stand next to me. Hey, Ty. You doing all right? When my reply didn't come right away, I felt him shuffle another step closer. Yeah, just deciding something. Deciding what? Just what I should be doing, whether all this stuff is in my head or if I should be more proactive about it. What, the stuff with the thing downstairs? Right. Who do I have to shake down for you? What? Family sticks together, right? If you ask me to do something, I'll do it, even if it means shaking people down until they fess up that they're the one making you upset. Really? Just like that? Look. He trailed off briefly, looking off to the side while he processed the thoughts into words. Hearing that you saw me as family, that I have a home to come back to? That's the shit that I want to earn. You take care of me, I'll take care of you. No questions asked. What if I need you to kill someone, Ty? You should probably question that one. <laughs> <laughs> just right off the bat, just what if I need you to kill someone, Ty? <laughs> I shot him a smirk and wasn't expecting one back. Only well, question I'll be asking is where you want the body hidden. <laughs> I chuckled, flattered and nervous I was given I was uncertain as to how serious he was being. As I glanced up, I noticed the sun cresting over the trees. Hey, look. I pointed and Ty looked to see the sun rise, too. Huh. There was a tone in his voice I didn't know how to place. Was it off? Was it something else? When I pulled my eyes away, I noticed him looking at me. So what's the plan? The plan? You came out here to decide, right? What'd you decide? I don't really know. I think I want to be more proactive about it. I don't really think I know how I'm supposed to be stopping something like this. Considering just bailing then? What? And leave everyone behind? Well, I'd tag along. Figure we can rope Diener Haas into, yeah? Yeah. But I think I want to keep everyone safe, no matter what. Well, alright. Just let me know what you need me to do. Hi. I looked him over and he just flashed me a smile. It was enough and before I knew it, I was watching him head back inside. Looking back out at the world, I sighed. Thinking back, I should have told Ty that I loved him a long time ago. With what the word, what that word meant to people, I was worried that it might be taken the wrong way, or that it, or that it'd scare him off. Boyfriend or brother, I didn't really know what type of love this was. Still, I could rely on him to help me out, and that was good for my morale. Just knowing I wasn't in this alone was something I needed to be reassured of this morning. Even in the worst case scenario, I still trusted Ty. I considered for a moment omitting the sugar as Tyson crossed my mind. Maybe it was because of the proper association now with him being family that by extension I thought of how Dad took his. Prepare breakfast? Yes. Gotta make, gotta make the pancakes. Okay, pancakes are good and... Suddenly, I was hugged from behind, looking down at the arms, embracing me. Oh, Ty! Morning, bro. Bro? Huh, what happened to calling me pup? What, don't like it? I don't know, maybe I'm just not used to it. Yeah, it's fucking weird, huh? If you're not liking it, I'll just stick to what you're used to. Well, change is always good, right? Maybe. Not gonna pretend you didn't make me pretty happy last night. I considered telling him then and there. Before I could get the words out, though, Tyson continued. It's something I should have come clean about years ago, too. Guess you have bigger balls than I do, huh? That made me snicker as he stepped back and let me retrieve the pancakes from the oven. Well, I don't know, maybe you've just been rubbing off on me lately. Maybe. He held my gaze for a bit before looking away suddenly, scratching the back of his neck. Alright, I came in to get coffee. I just came in to get coffee, fuck. He was off again before he grabbed the coffee pot and went back into the dining room. He wasn't hiding the fact that he was in a hurry, and I made a note to ask him about it later. Shaking my head, I turned back to the oven and pulled the pancakes out, a task I'd set myself before I'd gotten distracted. Oi, Hoss, let me handle this. Young again? I know the brat best, he's family. 
family of. Far be it from me to stand in the way of the duties an older brother must do. Knock it off. You're more than welcome to do instead. As much as Ty said it, he didn't mean it. It was clear in how he was staring Haas down that he was trying to get him to leave instead of hoist responsibility over to him. No, no, but if you need me to tag in, just let me know. It's what friends do after all. What? That's the fuck! We watched Haas go back inside while Ty put a hand on my back. You dork, you alright? Yeah, I'm good, just, uh, you know. What, getting yourself worked up for no reason? It's not that, Ty, just seeing everyone at the table, I guess, got me panicking if I could really follow through on being more proactive. On saving everyone, I mean. Look, option is there to fail, we can leave right now. And the others? I told you already, I don't want to leave them behind. Buck up, Dave. I've got your back. That means I need to drag your ass home kicking and screaming, I will. Thanks. Now, how do you want to handle this thing? I don't think I know. I guess I should start by trying to piece together what I remember seeing and go from there. Grab a shower first. What? But we had the last night! And you look tired as fuck still. Go get it done, and I'll meet you down here. And you're sure that's fine? Yup, go get yourself sorted out, and then we can take this at your pace. Together. I wandered upstairs and took a shower. I was right, it woke me up a little more, and I felt somewhat more ready to, for what was to come. Ah! Uh. There were a couple things that I needed, or thought that might help me keep tabs on things. The first, my notebook. I figured that while I was intending to use this as a more of a journal, having things written down might just be a better way to keep my thoughts organized. Please tell me Orlando joins us. And hey, if Roswell had a notebook for his thoughts, it can't have been that bad of an idea. Next up, phone. Just in case I needed to call someone or use something on it. I guess it could be used as a backup notebook, but that's only an option so long as it stays charged. I'd already let it run out once, so having something like my notebook makes sense to have as my primary method of recording information. When I came back downstairs... Uh, what's going on? I grabbed Deaton. Okay. But why? Am I not mad? I can go do something else. Nope, you're staying. Head on outside and we'll meet you out there. Just need to ward Dave up on something. Well, alright, don't be down. Dean wandered off and left through the back door, and Tyson wandered up to me glancing at the notebook in my hands. So, why'd you grab Dean? I thought you liked him. Well, yeah, but, uh, I scratched my head, not really sure what I was missing. Not that I didn't welcome Dean's help, but he wasn't the one I was expecting Tyson to ask. Honestly, I didn't expect him to ask for help from anyone. What, don't need a wingman suddenly? Oh no, not you too, Ty! What, I can help? You deserve someone who will take care of you. Show off how smart you are, or whatever. I bit my tongue, looking at Ty much in the same way he stared down Haas before. Last few times I'd even mentioned it, it went over poorly. So at least for now, I'd suck it up and focus on what I had to do. Okay. But all the response got me was that firm stare back, as if he knew exactly where my mind was at. Still, he said nothing, instead opting to throw an arm over my shoulder and together we wandered out to meet Dean. Ah, there you are. I was starting to get worried I'd done something. Could you maybe chill? I'm plenty chill. I just thought that after what we'd spoken about... Dean stopped short and I looked between the two of them to see what was up. So, Dave, what's the plan? Huh? Wait, no. What did you two speak about? Nothing. Dean? Uh, nothing. Just guy talk. We're not here for guy talk. Oi, Dean. You wonder what's happening or nah? Only a little. Somebody will help and Dave figure something out. Right? Which, depending on what that is, just leave it to me. Ugh. Just tell him, Pop. Well, do you remember a few days ago, Tice mentioned that I'd seen something in the vault about him dying. Mm, that was when we looked for the gun, right? That's right. Uh, sorry about that. Still, oh. offers there if you ever want to talk about, you know. I grimaced at Dean, shaking my head. I'll be alright. If anything, I think this might help with that. If you say so, what's first? Well, I want to try and figure out how Tyson died. Wait, really? But... Dean gestured to Tyson, confused. He's right there! Yeah, we know. I mean, I want to try and piece together what might have happened. Not to be a killjoy, but how are we going to help here? He's got a point. You got both of us to help, but... Yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. Um... David, David, please don't take offense to this. Please do not take offense to this, but, uh... Dave is... Smart in some things. I don't think this is one of those things. 
I think in situations like this, all ideas just slot is, is in situations like this his brain is smooth. And all ideas slide off like a water slide. <laughs> I clutched my notebook, drumming my fingers against the cover while I thought. Figuring out how Tyson died was going to be tougher than I thought, but I remember what I saw. There's no way I could forget something like that. My comments hang heavy with all three of us looking down at the ground before a bit before I broke the silence. So, Ty? Yeah? Can we go back to uh, that spot where we fought? Ty led the way and I shot Dean a look. He seemed curious with a concerned frown on his face as we made our way over to the spot where I'd stopped Ty from entering the forest. What is that about? Ty looked at me, then at Dean, fumbling over his words. Nothing important. I whined softly, gently tapping my nose out of reflex. It was something I shouldn't have done as Dean soon turned to me and put a hand on my shoulder. Dave? What is that about? Well... Stop. Don't. It was stupid. It was my fault. The fuck do you mean it's your fault? It was. I asked you some questions and you got upset. What? Think I wanted to rough you up? Dean placed a hand on my chest and another on Ty's before easing us apart. Keeping us at arm's length, he turned to Tyson his tone serious. Okay, that's enough. First of all, if I found out you hurt Dave in any way, there'll be hell to pay. Secondly, while well, I like the idea that I've been asked to help with some, if you two need to squabble about something, instead I can go hang out with someone else. Oh, I'm sorry. I scratched my head, chuckling. I think it'd be best explained as like brothers fighting and roughhousing a little brothers i looked at ty and rather than him jumping at the concept his attention seemed drawn elsewhere well aren't i embarrassed i could have sworn how well you two get on that you were already boyfriends that i've been strung along for a while there oh god no dean it's not like that at all right ty he mumbled something under his breath before looking up and nodding slowly right well all right slay on mr detective is the spot we want well Looking around didn't immediately tip off this This was the right place to be looking, but it made me remember our fight. It made me remember Ty's threat to enter the forest, and I wondered if that was what made it all go down. From what I remember, you were face down on the ground, Ty. Great. So what? Um, better question. How did it out? What do you remember saying? He was on the ground with a lot of gashes on his face, and I shuddered, sniffling and opening my notebook to write down things while they were fresh. And... Stuttering, I tried to get the words out. Seeing Tyson so bloody in my mind's eye, I could feel the tears start to well up. Hey, it's all right. Maybe we'll start with that and go through the list. I whined, nodding. Gashes, huh? wonder what could have messed up my messed my face up. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if the woods had bears or something like that in there. Reckon you would have pissed one of them off? Fuck off. I'm not messing with a bear. No? Fuck. You. Banana. Doubt i go messing with anything like that. Hell. It'd be hard enough to get me to stick around for a second and go after getting me in the face once. Hmm. Oh, hiya. Wiping my eyes, I thought it over. It made sense of what I remembered about the cuts. What if it was a weapon that did multiple cuts at once? Or claws? Well, that'd fit the bill if it was a bear attack or anything with claws like that, really. Not even a knife? Are there knives with multiple uh, thingies? You mean blades? Closest thing I can think of that I'd seen like that is a uh, Dean is a hand hoe in the greenhouse. Reckon you could do some damage one of those. How many people do you think have access to it? All of us, really. It's just a gardening tool. I don't think it'd be that anyway. How come? Who the fuck picks a hand hoe as a murder weapon? You've seen the shit of the mansion. Literally anything else makes for a better weapon. You've got a point there. Doesn't That doesn't narrow things down, does it? I thought back as to what else could help. There were two things I could think of. The metal or wounds on the arm. Ah, my back. <laughs> the Tyson Killinator, obviously. <laughs> Dr. Doofenshmirtz just got done dirty. Life did him dirty. <laughs> the medal. You were holding a medal? Of course I was. What? You find a medal out in the woods? 
I guess. Or I guess I would have if the shit is real. Something's bothering me about it, though. Well, the one I remember you seeing was uh, silver or something like that anyway. That's strange. Aren't the metals we found so far all, I guess you call them rounds? They're not silver. Trust me, I'd know. How many have we found so far again? Well, Lorena found that one in the maze. Dave found the one under the pumpkin. Plus the one I dug up brings us to two and a half. What? Half a metal? Yeah. Yeah, I showed it to Dave. Still, that one wasn't silver either, right? Just dirty? Tyson shrugged and Dean started to scratch his head. A silver metal. So isn't one of the ones that we're looking for? I don't really want to be looking in the woods for any metals if I can avoid it. I'm just telling you what I remember seeing. Great, so if we see a silver metal, we know I'm fucked. Ty, not funny. Fine, I'll be careful. Oh, right. There are also wounds on your arm. What kind? Um, it was on the same arm as the one holding the metal. They look small. My arms aren't small. I mean, compared to man. <laughs> Dean made a show of flexing, his arms being significantly bigger on both. Bigger both because of his size, but also from the physical labor he did near daily. Quit staring, pup. Focus. I laughed, having gotten pretty distracted and seeing Dean flex. Part of me wondered if Ty could... Ty would do that for me later if I asked. Sorry, I meant the marks. Alright, well, what do they look like? I'd probably say they look like little cuts, maybe bites. Bats? And small ones? Why don't let anything bite me more than once? Hard to say, if you were dead in the memory, then some could have just been nibbling on you afterwards. What fits that description? If we're talking things that live in the forest, that brings us back to a bear again. Think a bear could have done small marks? What about a fox? I guess that could work. Why would I go chase a fox? Maybe it was chasing you? The fuck did I do to that fox? I don't know, did it say anything? How the fuck should I know? Look, if I was stuck in the woods for a night, I'd be fine not eating. Been longer periods with, of time without me eating, and I didn't go. Ass brings all the boys to the yard. Damn right. It's better than y'all. Damn right. It's better than y'all. He can teach you. But he'd have to charge. Well, guess we're thankful. There's no reason for us to worry about anyone going hungry, right? Right. Still. Ty looked at me and I understood. He'd been in worse spots before as far as food was concerned. Didn't explain what could have attacked him, though. So, where does that leave us? Funny as it is talking about how I magically died, it's getting old. Uh, that's up to Dave, isn't it? I was hoping that we'd have someone we could potentially point to as a suspect, right? You want to do an interrogation? Deb's on me and the good cop, then. Tyson, you can be the bad cop. Suits me fine. But who, though? Well, do we have any other clues? When did she Tass and die? It was, uh, four days ago, I think. We were out here and he was threatening to walk home. Through the backyard? I had a lot of shit on my mind. I wasn't thinking straight. So, safe to say that if Dave saw you dead, you wandered into the forest and got killed. I whined and it seemed the thought troubled Ty as well. But then, how do you explain what I saw? Tyson came back. Well, yeah, but... No, he came back, Dave. Trust me. When you got a big enough family like I do, you see siblings and relatives bicker all the time. Sure, it's only a guess, but... He trailed off, and my attention slowly went back to Tyson, who was staring at me in shock. Was what Dean said the truth? Would Ty have done that if things had played out differently? It was before I told him about him being family and what happened after. Hey, Dean. What? Give me five minutes with Dave alone. Then after, I want to talk to you about something. About what? Mind your own business. Are we done then? I don't think we're going to get very far just off memories alone, as much as I'm sad to say. Hope I uh, helped. Oh, uh, yeah, it's at least giving me stuff to think about. Well, I'll leave you two alone for a bit. Meet me in the greenhouse when you're ready, Tassin. Uh, no. They're not brothers. Like, at all. Dean lumbered off towards the greenhouse, leaving Ty and I alone. For a few moments, we just stood there, and I wondered if Ty was eating into his five minutes on purpose. Uh, Ty, if you're only going to be five minutes, you might want to start talking, right? Then suddenly he grabbed me in a hug, holding me to his chest. He didn't say anything at first, opting to instead just rest his chin on my shoulder. He's right. Who? Dean, about what? Ty stepped back and looked at me carefully. At the time, I was so mad. 
probably would have wandered into the forest for the rest of the day before feeling like a dumbass and wanting to come apologize. But you rarely apologize to anyone. You're different. But why'd you get so mad? Look, it's not important, all right? It's dumb, I'm dumb, let's just move on, yeah? Please? Okay. I looked over to the greenhouse before looking back at Ty. Jaw clenched in uncertainty. I wasn't sure how much time we had left before you had to meet Dean. Ty, I... I know. You do? He breathed in deep, straightening before looking over to the greenhouse. I do, so don't worry about saying it. Makes you so sure of what I was going to say. Because... Ty sighed out, kicking the dirt. Look, just promise me something, alright? What is it, Ty? That no matter what happens, you'll be happy, alright? I don't understand. You're a brat and need someone to look out for you constantly, so promise me. I... Please, call it a favor for your older brother or whatever. I looked at him, confused as to what had brought this on, but I nodded slowly. Alright, I promise. Good. He straightened and looked me over quickly before looking in the direction of the greenhouse. So, tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? Are you helping me with dinner or what? Sure, I guess. And after? Dessert? I meant sharing a bet, dumbass. Are we doing that again tonight? I- Sure, okay. Actually... Don't go changing your mind. If the answer was no, why bother asking? Fine, we'll share a bed. But this last time for a while. Because... Because... I'm going to go talk to Dean. So go stay out of trouble. I rolled my eyes and he stepped forward to pat me between my ears. Hope you're feeling a little better. Come find me later if you want to hang out. I wandered off in the direction of the greenhouse, and I looked around again. Were there any clues I'd missed? Was there nothing more to go off of? I spent the rest of the morning thinking things over and eventually made my way into the dining room. As far as I knew, shy of going into the forest, I was out of clues. We're going to leave off here tonight. Ah! Anyways... Stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.